evening. Um, I will just light the tenor candle, which you didn't light earlier, so let's hope it lights Well, a very warm welcome. We have a series of, of talks on the theme of sacred nature. The next one, by the way, is next Wednesday, Bishop James Jones. But we are fortunate indeed to welcome back an old friend of Temenos and of mine, I'm proud to say, and a fellow of the Academy, Satish Kumar, former monk and peace activist, international speaker and world renowned author of many books including the one that's most relevant for us this evening, Soil Soul Society, which is on sale at the back, and which I highly recommend. Very kindly gave me a copy several years ago. And this is also just to say his latest book, Radical Love, which Satish has been giving talks on recently, so do look out for them. In this book and in the talk this evening, Satish will emphasize the close interrelatedness of ourselves with nature, in which, as he powerfully reminds us, whatever we do to, to nature, we in fact do to ourselves. Now, it's always a special pleasure for me to introduce Satish, since he lives in the next door village to my own family in North Devon. And I've been lucky enough to sit with him on many beaches on the nearby Atlantic coast and occasionally swim. <laughs> since the 1970s, yes, as well as regularly visiting him and wonderful June, his wife, for tea. The village in, is called Heartland, where Satish originally founded the small school many years ago, and from where the pioneering magazine, which he edited for decades, Resurgence and Ecologist operate, and you're very lucky to everyone has a copy on their seats. This is a remarkable and beautiful publication which, as most of you will know, owes its survival and its flourishing to the driving force that is Satish Kumar behind it. Now, as Satish writes, environmentalists are all very well, but they forget the pre key principle that there is no separation between nature and the divine. And if we do not acknowledge this, then there is little hope for true change in the ongoing destruction of the natural world. Satish has campaigned tirelessly to alter the attitude of those who have the means to affect this change. And most remarkably, he never gives up. The, world, the word inspiring is often overused, but not when applied to this great and unassuming crusader for all things good. I was fortunate enough to teach on two Schumacher workshops, two workshops, summer workshops with Satish a few years ago at Schumacher College Dartington entitled Gardening as Spiritual Practice, where one of his talks was on the Indian or Hindu perspective on the natural world. It was completely fascinating and uplifting to hear how the focus of this perspective is, how the focus of this perspective perspective, I'm sorry, is on the sacredness of nature. And this evening, Satish will be our expert guide in exploring this. And crucially, how we must make peace with ourselves in order to make peace with nature, his beautiful title of the lecture, Making Peace with Nature. And just one last thing, last week at the King's Foundation, um, I introduced Dr. Richard Temple at the, of the Temple ga Gallery, who gave a beautiful lecture on the profound spiritual significance of the Virgin Mary. And forgive me for mentioning this, Satish, I know many people do, but I realized he was the same age as you, 87. Thank heaven for the two of you, guiding lights in this dark world. Indeed, it is hard for me not to give Satish an honorific title. And having recently returned from Sri Lanka, it was brought home to me by my friends there that Sri is a Sanskrit title, as Satish, of course, knows well, meaning respected, admired, revered, celebrated. Also, shining 
and auspicious and indeed holy. I venture to say that all these descriptions may be applied to him. So a very warm welcome to Sri Satish, please. <laughs> I don't think I need a microphone. No. I speak without microphone. I don't think I want to be behind you like this. I you need to be behind the lectern. In front of you. <laughs> Sorry? You need to be behind the lectern. I think he's filming all the room. Do you mind being behind the lectern? Oh, really? He's asking you to. Sorry. But are you recording it or something? Yes. Okay. I have to be here. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Emma, for such a marvelous um, introduction. That's a very, very kind, very generous, very magnanimous, wonderful introduction and welcome. I'm a fellow of uh, um, Temenos Academy, and the founder of Temenos Academy, Kathleen Rain, was my very dear friend. We worked together for many years. And, and she wrote a beautiful book on India called India Seen Afar. And we traveled together to India a number of times. And so I have ever since, I'm a, a fellow of uh, Terminals Academy as a wonderful academy. So I greatly admire. Today, I've been requested to speak about making peace with nature. In India, there's a mantra Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Om is a very beautiful one word, which comes from the Upanishads, which is kind of beyond words to describe the meaning of Om. Om means whole, like omnipresent, omnipotent, omniscience. Amen. All these words come from Om. So totality, universality, all, everything, nothing left out. And Shanti means peace. So may peace be with all. And then three times Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. So to bring that all into three words. So first Shanti, you say, make peace with yourself. Second Shanti, we say, make peace with all human beings. And the third Shanti is make peace with more than human beings, the rest of the universe. Make peace with nature, make peace with universe. So Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. It's a very beautiful mantra. And shanti, or peace, in Sanskrit, is not just absence of war. Shanti does not mean just not having weapons or nuclear bombs or anything of that kind. Shanti is a way of life. Shanti means living in harmony with yourself, living in harmony with all other people, irrespective of their religion, their race, their caste, their, um, their nationality, whatever they are. Before I'm an Indian, you are a British, or somebody is a Russian, somebody is Chinese, somebody is Ukrainian, somebody is American. Before all that, we are all human beings. And you know what the word human come from in Latin? The word human comes from humus. And some of you may be gardeners and may know the meaning of the word humus. Humus means soil. So human beings are literally soil beings. And therefore, making peace with yourself and making peace with people and making peace with nature is all together. Because we are nature. We are soil beings. We have come from the soil and we return to the soil. All the food you eat, what is it? Your apples and oranges 
and cauliflowers and potatoes and all the rest. What is it? It's a soil. You plant a little apple seed, tiny apple seed, and that goes into the soil. And then soil gives itself, herself, to it. And that little seed becomes a plant. And the soil gives more feed and more carbon and more uh, all the elements and all the uh, um, things that it required. And with the help of the sun and the rain and water, that soil is becoming trunk. And that soil is becoming branches. And that soil is becoming leaves. And that soil is becoming blossoms. And that soil becoming fruit again. And that we eat and enjoy. And in that fruit, in that apple, there are more seeds. From one tiny seed which you planted in your apple orchard, you can create a whole new orchard with one seed. And you need no money. You need to buy anything. Each apple will have not, you planted one seed to create apple tree, but that one seed is creating thousands of apples. And year after year after year, not one year, but year after year, depending on the kind of apple tree you have planted, it is a, a standard big apple tree, it can last for 50 years, 60 years. Just imagine nature, what it can do, regenerative nature. It regenerates itself. It doesn't need any money, any investment. It doesn't need any bank to create all those apples. No loans needed. That is the miracle of nature. And we think that we are the gardeners. We are the orchard keepers. You plant one potato, and that one potato becomes 10 potatoes when you harvest. All soil has made those potatoes. And then we say, we are the gardeners. We are special. But it's the soil is the real gardener. And even more in, assist, in uh, helping soil and working with the soil is earthworm is the real gardener. Long live the earthworms because they keep the soil pliable and fertile and they keep turning. You don't need any spade or you need any fork, just earthworm in the soil will keep the soil moving. And that way, one potato becomes 10 potatoes and one apple seed becomes thousand apples and thousands of trees. So realizing that, or oh, our clothes, I'm wearing this uh, nice um, scarf, it's soil transformed into uh, cotton or wool, soil transformed. Soil is the soul, soil is life, and we are soil. We think nature, Emma said, we are nature. As I said, hum from humus, humus means soil. I want to remind you where the word nature comes from. Nature comes from word natal. Latin word natal. And many of you are mothers. And when you give birth to a child, you have prenatal check, don't you? Prenatal check, you remember? When you had a baby, a midwife came for a prenatal check before the birth. And after the birth, postnatal check. Natal means birth. Anything and everything which is born is nature. How can we say we are not nature? We are born natal, and so we are nature. So there's no separation between nature and humans. We are nature. We are made of nature. We are made of earth, air. We cannot live without breathing air for five minutes or 10 minutes. Even if you are yogi and doing a lot of pranayama and a lot of samadhi, still you need to breathe. You cannot live. We are air and we are fire and water in our body. 70% of our body is water. And we say, we are not nature. We are separate from nature. We are above nature. We are superior to nature. Nature only there for our use. We are water. 
70% of our body is water. And the miracle, the miracle of all miracles is the water and fire live happily together in our body. Water and fire, you say fire and water are not compatible. They, the, um, the, uh, water will extinguish fire, but not in our body. Our body is kept warm with fire and moist with water. So we are earth, we are fire, we are water, we are air. And we have to have a gratitude to earth, air, fire, water. That is the making peace with nature, is to say thank you, earth. Thank you every day that you are feeding us with your own body without any discrimination, without any judgment. Earth does not say that I will only feed the king and not the beggars. Earth and air and fire and water does not say that I will quench the thirst of only the saints and not the sinners. Only the, the kind of good people and not the bad people. Only the priests and not the prisoners. Earth, air, fire, water, nature sustains life of every single living being. Human, animals, plants, birds, insects, everybody is left or kept alive and vibrant and vital with nature. And so we need that gratitude. That's a sacred nature of nature. That gratitude, that understanding. Thank you, Mother Earth for keeping us alive. Thank you, air, for keeping my breath going. Thank you, uh, fire, for keeping me warm and giving me light. Sun is the god of fire and always stands there, giving so much light. Wonderful. We have forgotten that gratitude. We take it for granted. We take nature for granted. And we think we are more clever. Nature is nothing. Nature is only a means to an end. Nature is only a means to an end lots of us, a lot of human beings. A means to an end, and what is the end? Economic growth. Make money, make profit. Use natural resources only as woods for, for furniture or building houses or making paper, um, anything, all factory farms, animals just for meat, no other value, no compassion, no kindness, no sense of the sacred of life. So we think that humans are somehow superior to nature, above nature, and nature only a means to an end, and the end is our human prosperity, human wealth, human housing, human cars, all the kind of equipments and all the kind of resources. We need humans, everything for us, us, us. This is a human arrogance, it's a human ego. We have to become humble. The word humble comes from soil too, humility. Human and humility come from the soil. Soil is always humble. Soil is always under your feet, never on your head, never goes on your head, always humble. We humans, if we are truly humans made of soil, we need to be humble and say, thank you soil. Thank you uh, water. Thank you earth. Thank you land. Thank you, uh, fire. Thank you, air. Thank you, thank you. That gratitude, that humility without nature, all your banks, all your banks, they, are, they, they say, call it, I was invited to speak at our university, not far from here, around the corner for LSE, London School of Economics. And I asked them, do you understand the meaning of economics? And they said, yes, yes, we are a school of economics. I said, please tell me, what is the economics? They say, economic means business plan, budget, bank, spreadsheet, bottom line, profit profitability. I said, that's not economy. That's a money nomi. That's not economy. That's a money nomi. Money management. Economy, eco, word, Greek word comes from Greek, means home. And in the wisdom of the Greek philosophers, the entire planet is our home. What a wonderful vision. In India, we have the similar vision. Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam. The entire planet is our family. 
And in Greek philosophy, entire planet is our home. The birds flying in the sky are our brothers and sisters. The deer and the snake and the lion and the tiger and the elephant in the forest are brothers and sisters. The, the oak tree and the ash tree and the apple tree and the orange tree and the banana tree and the papaya tree and, and the, and the, and the uh, grape uh, plant, all our family members. That's the kind of vision of eco. And that's a, um, and um, nomos means management. Knowing how to manage your household is economy. No, I, what we say, the economy, economic growth, there's no economic growth. It's only money growth. They are talking about money. Bankers count money. They don't understand soil. And if you are working in the soil, you are backward. You have not been to Oxford. You have not been to Cambridge. You have not been to any university. You have not been to UCL. You are backward. You are uneducated. You are not clever. You are not smart. So you work on the land. We'll pay you 10, 15, 20 pounds an hour, and that's it. But if you want to work in a bank, you get 500 pounds an hour or 200 pounds an hour or 300 pounds an hour. Huge salaries. Why we have forgotten the care of the soil, care of the land, care of nature, care of trees, care of animals are our life, our lifeline. And we have forgotten it. We think we're sitting in these big offices of Lincoln Field Inn and, and, a, and a high rise buildings and, and the, the kind of new, new buildings, high rise buildings and having a lift and having a big car and having a lot of computers and having a lot of telephones. That's a progress. And working on a field and being a gardener, being a farmer, they are backward. You better get food from uh, America or get food from Brazil, get food from somewhere else. We don't need food. You build more houses, build more roads. We need more road. Progress is the infrastructure. For what infrastructure? What will you do with infrastructure? Build a motorway from Edinburgh to London and from London, uh, Eurostar to, to or, or even, even roads and, and boats uh, and Eurostar to Paris uh, to do what? Scottish water. Scottish water being transported to France. And then what do they bring back from France? Avian water back to Scotland. That's a progress. That's the progress. And therefore, you need more roads and more motorways and more housing and more aeroplanes and more trains and more high, high HS2 or HS3 or HS5. There's no end. We have lost our way to nature. We need to come back to nature. I say, we are nature. Nature is sacred. Nature is our life. We have the gratitude to nature and live in harmony with nature taking care of nature, taking care of our forests, our oak trees and our ash trees and our, our apple trees, all the orchards, they are our real wealth. The wealth is not in the city of, of London. This idea that these banks have wealth and they're wealth creators, they're not the wealth creators. The real wealth is the land, the soil, the forests, the animals and the humans. Humans are real wealth, our talent, our imagination, our creativity, our skills. A potter, a carpenter, a builder, a house builder, that is their skill and that is their wealth. We have forgotten that. You don't need to build, you don't need to make pottery, you don't need to make carpentry, you don't need to do anything. Just everything will be made by machine. Humans are just unnecessary, useless. Just be a consumer. I want to say we are not consumers. We are humans, that means nature, and we are makers. We make pottery, we build a house. All the beautiful cathedrals we built, St. Paul's and Westminster Cathedral and, and the Durham Cathedral and Sartre Cathedral in, in France and Taj Mahal, they were done without AI and without all the computers and without all the cranes and without all the motorways and highways and trains. Nothing was there. They are all and a Stonehenge. Just imagine how they built. And now they build a house in a week, all prefabricated, ugly, ugly, ugly. And they think we are progressing. We are advanced. We are making progress. We are, we are at the top of the world. And all the Africans and Asians, they are working by their hand and building the houses. And they're all backward. Let's bring them industrialization. Bring them mechanization. Bring them AI. Bring them progress. Bring them development. They are all backward. Development means destruction of skills, destruction of 
intelligence, human intelligence. We talk about artificial intelligence. What about natural intelligence? Humans, human intelligence is hardly used. We have so much capacity to use our intelligence, but maybe 10, 15, 20% of our intelligence we use. 80% is unused. And but now people say, oh, even don't use that 10%, 20% that you are using, use AI. So my passion, which you can see how passionate I am, is that we need to be simple, elegant, but another book of mine, which is not today here, but you can look out for it, elegant simplicity. Simple life, elegant, beautiful, useful, durable, regenerative. These are the sacred and perennial wisdom, the perennial philosophy, the perennial values, which we have inherited from our ancestors. And we don't even pay any, any respect to our ancestors. We don't respect our ancestors. We forget them. They say, it's all we created. We did create it, everything. We have inherited so many gifts from our ancestors. Our language, our philosophy, our poetry, our music, our architecture, our, our religion, so much. I can make a list of 100 things and more we have received from our ancestors. And we don't pay any respect or any answer. They were backward. They were uneducated. They did not have any progress. They did not have any development. We are the progressive and, and at the top of the world. So we need to become humble. And elegant simplicity is the, is the way to protect nature. So protecting nature, conserving nature, is conserving ourselves because we are nature, and when we are nature, uh, and we look after, I mean, trees give us oxygen. They take our carbon. All the global warming and climate change happening, if we live in harmony with nature, and let nature take our carbon and give us their oxygen, well, no problem, no global warming. But instead of trees and nature, we have become obsessed with cars and oil and fossil fuel and, and, and energy, 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 more and more energy. And never, our greed never satisfies. Britain is number four economy in the world. And yet every day, one mantra, they don't say, oh, shanti, shanti, shanti. They only say mantra is economic growth, economic growth, economic growth. Whether you go to Sunak or Boris Johnson or uh, uh, Major or, uh, or um, Starmer or Labour or, or Tory or Liberal, anybody. Now, well, economic growth, economic, how much do you want? I would like to see no one in Britain should earn more than, highest, more, highest income should not be more than one million pounds a year. That's enough. What more do you want? One million is not enough for you to have your food, your clothes, your shoes, your car, whatever you need, energy, one million now. And no one should be paid less than 100,000 pounds a year. That's one to 10, that's the difference. So everybody has a good life and then everybody should do gardening and a little bit of connection with the land, a little bit of connection with nature. Every weekend, we should be going to nature helping farmers. Every weekend, we should have allotment and produce some food. Every weekend, we should take care of our workers on the land. Why are we not going, we are not, our health is deteriorating. Why? Because we have forgotten nature. Why? Because we have forgotten how to garden, how to touch the soil. Emma and I did course at Srimaha College on sacred uh, nature of gardening and gardening as a spiritual practice. Gardening is a spiritual practice and also a physical, physical necessity. I'm a gardener. I have two acres. Emma knows my garden. Two acres. And even now in the winter, in the middle of the winter, I'm not buying any vegetables. I have leeks. I have potatoes saved, I have spinach, I have Brussels sprouts, I have uh, cabbage, I have everything in Devon every day I'm eating my lunch and dinner from the garden. Why not? And that, I tell you, the taste of that food is amazing. Fresh, organic, before, 10 minutes before I cook my lunch or my wife cooks lunch, we go in the garden and bring the vegetables. Everybody, if you're prime minister, garden. If you're president, garden. I'm very pleased to say the King Charles Gardens. He had, uh, he invited me to High Grove when he was Prince Charles and I saw him in welly boots 
and, 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 a, and a spade in his hand and on his shoulder. Amazing. If Prince Charles and King Charles now, I wish him a very good health. I was very sorry to hear his health. I wish him very good health, very speedy recovery and very quick recovery. He is wonderful. He's a good example of wisdom and he's the patron of Temenos Academy. He's a good example of a human being who has love for nature, who has understanding of nature. For 20, 30 years, he had been always saying to everybody in, in our country, prime ministers, presidents, and everybody, that take care of nature. Nature is our source of real life. Your banks will not save you. Nature will save you. But nobody listened to him. Now, a little bit of lip service being paid, but still our politicians are wedded and our industrialists and our business leaders are wedded to economic growth, economic growth, economic growth, which is not economic growth, which is money growth, money growth, money growth. This is a tragic situation. It's not only in England or Britain. This is a world phenomenon. America is number one economy in the world. They spend more money on their Pentagon on their armaments, on their military, on their weapons, more money than the entire world put together. Entire world, including China, including Russia, including Europe, including India, all the countries put all their budget, uh, military budget in one side, uh, American military budget on the other side, American military budget is greater. And yet people are living in slums, People are in the street, have no uh, health, health insurance. Everybody has a gun. There are 4 million guns for 200, two, two, uh, 250 million people. Double the guns. Everybody's afraid of each other. Everybody said, self-defense, I have to have a gun. What kind of culture are we creating? And then America wants the whole world to follow America, American example. Do you want the whole world to have guns? so that we can kill each other. Every year, how many people are killed? Economy, true economy is good, but money nummy is not going to save you the world. Nature will save the world. Nature will look after the world. Nature, and we are nature. So I can go on, read my book, Soil, Soul Society. Soil is our source of life. It, uh, the, the, um, the nature is not a resource for the economy. Nature is source of life itself. Nature is life itself. At the moment, we have made nature as a resource for the economy. That has to change. And I think Temenos Academy can change it. And they are, we are working on it. And thank you for your support and your participation in making nature sacred again and, and the love of nature. If you love nature, you love everybody. If you love nature, there'll be no wars. Because you could, War creates so much pollution, so much global warming, climate change, carbon emission, all these bombs and all these tanks and all these, all they need oil. So if you love nature, nature, love of nature forbids wars. Love of nature forbids hatred. Hatred is hell. And nature is heaven. If you want to be in heaven, heaven is not a location somewhere uh, behind the clouds that you go after dying. You can be in heaven now, today, if you go in the garden. I live in heaven. And hell is when you are hating and destroying nature and putting animals in factory farms and putting chemicals on the, in the soil and treating nature as if there's nothing. That is hell. And we are building more and more hell on earth. And Jesus Christ taught us to create the kingdom of God on earth. We can create it by our love for nature and our love and making peace with nature. So making peace with nature, making peace with people, and making peace with yourself, it's one continuum. There is no separation. So I wish you a few words to inspire you, and I hope that you will all take a little care of nature and maybe go out every weekend and, and be in the forest and, and, and admire the trees and write a poem about the trees and, and the paint a tree and a sit under a tree. The Buddha got enlightenment while sitting under a tree. We don't get enlightenment because we don't sit under a tree. We sit under these lights and these buildings. Where do you get enlightenment? Come to Devon. Emma and I will welcome you and we sit under our apple tree and you will be enlightened. Thank you.